So tonight it was all about that super moon. Amazing, I couldn't believe it. I was driving back from uh, dropping Sarah off to the train station and I could just see it on the horizon, just this massive great moon. <laughs> just crazy. Right guys, anyway, I've not filmed anything at all today. Um, I haven't really done a huge amount on the, um, on the battery itself. Um, but I've been out and about and doing some other bits. So, so I'm going to show you what I've done so far with the um, the micro power wall. It's basically almost finished, and um, I've got it all all kind of installed in here. And I'll show you what's inside. But um, this is the battery meter installed on the front. So that's showing you this um, state of charge gauge isn't actually correct. It should be on the on the low end, but I need to need to calibrate that yet. But um, so if you open it up, so you've got this clip at the top, just open that, click that open, and then and there goes something. So we open this up, and inside is a load of stuff. So the two batteries I've secured with um, the two parts of the, to the battery I've secured with um, just like cable tires through there, just just to keep them in place. BMS is obviously there. Um, we've got a little balancing connector there. That's for obviously checking the cell voltages um, manually. We've got the shunt for the battery gauge there, which has got like a little positive feed that comes in from the um, from the main positive, and then this like network cable that runs out to this, which is the back of the battery gauge, obviously. Um, what else have we got in here? We've got a 200 amp fuse installed on there, mega fuse. So this cooled up wire is just part of the feed to the battery meter. Um, coming back here, so this is the charge inputs. So I've got just a chop block on there for the moment. Um, you know, it's not going to be charging a huge amount of current, so so that's all right. Fuse for the charge, so charge wire on the BMS main output wire and the battery um, negative directly connected to that. So all in all, you close all that up, and you have your kind of micro power wall which is, um, I'm loving the look of it actually, it looks pretty smart. So we've got all the um, you know outputs here that you can, I don't think I'll use those because I've got stuff there so it's not really going to be feasible to put cables in there but these ones certainly I can run the main output leads from here which is quite nice actually because you could on here, um, see this is where your negative connects to there and then your posit positive will connect to that one so then if the wires come in that hole, they'll just nicely go to those two. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I've done a brief test just to like try and charge it um, using the um, the balancing charger that I've got, this one here. Um, but it works, it charges, but I haven't haven't kind of got to the end of the cutoff because it's a 45 amp hour battery, it's going to take ages to charge, um, or even on this 500 watt charger. So what I think I'm going to do, because the voltage is actually, the voltage of the pack is actually on the low side rather than the high side. So I'm going to try and discharge it. It's absolutely freezing in here because the, the um, Dyson's packed up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably rig up one of these fans to it because then that'll, that'll drag 15 amps out of it and that should discharge it. What I want to test is to see if the BMS is going to you know, be working and it would actually cut off at a sensible um, voltage per cell. Aiming for about around the three volt mark the um, reason for that is my, currently my inverter cuts off at 10.5 volts, so that's too low really for, for, this, for this sort of pack. You know, I don't want to be dragging them down to like 2.8 volts or something because it's not going to be good for them at all. So ideally what I want it to do with the, for the BMS side, I think it's going to cut out hopefully, I mean the specs of this BMS say it will cut out 3 volts or so. Still, still a little bit on the low side but Hopefully I'll be able to do something clever with the other system that I've got where, where I can maybe trigger some sort of solenoid to you know turn off the I don't know we need to I need to work something out with that because really I want my, my end voltage to be like 3.3 .3 or 3.2 or something like that so it's not going too low. Um, the other thing with this BMS is I think it only it's only going to balance when it reaches the very top end and I'm not going to go to the very top end of the charge because you know, I just don't want to don't want to risk it having this in here twenty four seven being charged by the sun. Um, as we've seen, quite a lot of power comes in from just that one panel. So, so I think this is going to be pretty much full all the time. So, so let's do a little discharge test. I just need to knock up a lead that I can run um, run this heater off. 
Also, while I'm here, I'll have a look at um, what's been going on uh, with the panel today. It's been a bit of a weird one today. It's been snow, rain, hail, um, sunshine, the lot. So you can see yesterday's bar is this one here. Don't you know, quite a bit came in yesterday. And then this is today. So what are we on? We've brought in 110 watt hours. Peak power is up today, 72 watts. So that's quite interesting. It, was, it wasn't anywhere near as warm today. Um, but it must have just been a freak solid bit of sunlight on the panel and it's, it's managed to get in um, 72 watts. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. It's only like 80 watt hours less than yesterday and it's it, it wasn't even that great, the weather. So we're all wired up, got these just power pole connectors um, clicked on there. So I've also got this connected so you can see individual cell voltages. So let's plug the fan in and discharge some batteries. Well, I could do with a bit of heat. So, first thing you notice is the cell voltages drop. Bit of an imbalance going on there under load. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get them down to the low level and then I'm going to give them a good balance charge directly connected to, to this and the balancer on this. Hopefully if I can get this to reach over here with the wire. So while this is discharging, I can show you something cool actually. So this is the, um, this is the meter. Um, and if you flick through the different screens on this, you'll see um, not that one there. So 13.6 amps is going out, obviously, into that fan. Um, and then I think, yeah, 184 watts going out with the minus sign there. So a bit lower than we've seen before, obviously, with the, the higher voltage on that fan. But um, different, different story. Uh, and that's showing you the accumulative amp hours that have got, gone out so far. So this is quite interesting. So the state of charge is, is going down because you're pulling pulling current out of the battery, um, but it's obviously not not accurate. Um, the next screen I think is yeah 1.1 hours remaining. That's what it's saying. Um, don't know how accurate that is. Probably not because it's not calibrated. And then back to the voltage screen. Now the cool thing about this is it's also got Bluetooth. So if you go back to your screen up here, um, you can actually go into the the other panel. So you can see there it is there. The, the smart BMV, um, the computer obviously then, or the, the phone in this case, connects to it um, and you can see all of those details in um, in real time there, so that's fantastic. So what we're interested in really is, is these um, these cells here, making sure that you know when that hits about 3 volts per cell, the BMS cuts the, uh, the power, there's no warmth there whatsoever, so 15 amps it's perfectly fine for this BMS, it's, it's no problem. It's rated at 100 amps, but you never really can believe these things. Um, so, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be going for quite a while. There's not really any voltage shift going on there at all. <clears throat> so, getting impatient, I've just rigged my other heater up, which has actually got both elements connected. So you can see, at the moment, this is quite interesting. This fan is exactly the same fan. This is actually a side note, but it's quite interesting. This fan is actually slower than the other one because there's not, not as much air coming out of it at all. And the current is higher. So, yeah, a bit odd. Anyway, I can turn the other element on. If you turn the other element on, um, you know, we're going up to 22 amps there. So so that's a bit of a better load, that one, to, to do testing on. Now, we're getting an issue here. Um, we've got 3.14 volts now on one of those banks, or two of those banks. This is too weird because it's almost like half that pack was out of balance or something because these are two cells that were not, you know, not related. And we're getting this check light go on, go on here as well. So yeah, we're gonna have to watch this. Hopefully we can get these um, voltages down to three pretty quickly and then can do a good balance charge. But there's a lot of heat coming off there as you'd, as you'd expect. And we're now pulling 24 and a half amps out of this baby. All right, down to 3.09 a cell. So still going. Right, we're approaching 3.03 volts on that one and 3.04 on that one. It's really interesting this, that those two are lower. I'm holding out hope that two of those cells are, were just part of the pack that wasn't balanced the same as the other because it was part of a big, obviously, e-bike pack. So, yeah, I'm hoping that's the case because it, it would kind of suck if there's some real problems, yeah? Right, guys, bad news. Bad news. I think I may have got the wrong BMS. I'm just sitting here and it's, it's it's basically discharging and it was going down to, it was about 2.8 volt. One of the cells was 2.8, or two of the cells were 2.8. 
and um, it hadn't cut off. So I'm thinking, oh, this is a bit weird. So I went went back to the spec sheet for it and had a look. And what it was, I bought, I actually bought a 3S, I bought a 3S one, bought a 3S balancer, and then I bought a 4S one from the same, from the same place. And it looks like I've ended up with a LIFE PO4 balancer because looking at the spec sheets on it, it's showing um, over discharge protect two volts and then maximum charging voltage 15 volts <sighs> so I've messed this up I'm gonna to have to change the BMS out probably because there's no way I can use that um, right so I've continued to mess around so what I was going to try and do is like balance charge using this charger but I think this balancer is interfering so I've got two lots of balance leads on here so you can't really do that because this charger just it's, freaks out and just says there's a balancing problem and if you disconnect this um, then obviously the BMS actually turns off so it's proven that the BMS is working so you've got this meter is obviously working now if you take out this BMS wire here what it does is it trips and then it basically won't come back on again so if you then reconnect this it doesn't come back on until you effectively remove this just make an intermittent connection there and then it's back on so basically you're resetting the BMS by removing this even this little load of this meter um, it knows that that's there so it, it effectively won't reset until you disconnect it. So there's a couple of things here that it's highlighted. I need to have a circuit breaker in line, um, which either is man enough for 100 amps, which probably doesn't really exist, um, or some sort of solenoid or something to, to trigger. But ultimately, I need, a, I need another BMS. So I'm gonna have to start doing a bit of research and see what I can, um, see what I can come up with on there. Bit annoying. This balancer has got an overcharge detect 3.75 volts. So what I could do is I could just charge it, I suppose. I could just stick it on charge and then it should cut out at 3.7 volts per cell. Could probably balance at that end as well. So that might be worth doing to just to charge it up and get it balanced. Because I don't really want to leave it in this low state. So let's try that. It's all charging through there, so I expect I can't believe I've made such a mistake. Really, really should have checked checked those descriptions. I just thought just the second BMS is exactly the same as the first one. So it seems like a pretty good BMS as well. It's just so annoying. You can't get one that's got you know the right voltage levels. Anyway, guys, I won't leave it on a bum note, but I think that's about it for now. Um, I'm going to get this charged up a little bit, and then probably if it's still out of balance, I'll just use this little balancer and just leave it on overnight to just just iron out really slowly and then hopefully what I can do is I can then put the load back on and see if the cells have um, you know cells have straightened out a bit under load uh, and then yeah next thing I just need to find find a um, BMS all right see you in the next one guys